Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. It is the Earth Master out here. About 7.42 p.m. here, California time, September 22nd, 2024. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a uh, 5.8 earthquake into the Chile area. Now, I did get uh, a notification here just a short time ago from the EMSC Earthquake app showing a 6.2. Uh, but it appears as though they have downgraded this earthquake a little bit to a 5.8. But uh, who knows if that will stick here. Let's see what we got for the latest activity here uh, from the EMSC model. USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet. Uh, there's the earthquake in question. 5.8 Chile area. About 38 kilometers deep. Source parameters as of right now have not been reviewed by a seismologist. So this, is, this could get revised. It could get upgraded, downgraded. Uh, I don't believe I have anything down there in the Chile area uh, for seismograph stations. So that's one I'm missing there. Normally I, I'll have a Chile station up there, uh, but I don't see it there on the live seismo. So I'll have to def definitely adjust that. We'll see what the USGS is uh, putting out for this earthquake. Again, it's in the area that's been uh, seeing a little bit of uptick here recently. A lot of uh, fra or not fracking, but uh, earthquake activity out here along these oceanic fractures and uh, divergent boundary activity normally puts a strain out here against the South America region, the Peru Chile Trench, and it appears as though uh, that is where the earthquake activity is occurring right now with that 5.8, and obviously some other elevated earthquake activity here uh, following this movement uh, with that uh, in the in the uh, West Chile Rise area, we've seen a 5.0, 4.9 and uh, some further adjustment here across the last 24 hours along the Prude Chile Trench. So not surprising. Uh, we'll definitely check back on that here in a second. Uh, California area has been at the halting point, so to speak. We've seen a lot of activity here. Middle America Trench northward, even into Baja, California, where we're seeing uh, a little bit of three stirring up here. Just off the uh, coast there, Baja, California. Southern California just shy here of seeing all that elevated activity on the uptick there, but uh, specifically in Southern California, not a whole lot above 2.5. Generally microquake activity out here, but um, we'll continue to watch that. A little bit of swarming is occurring down here uh, south of the Ensenada area of Baja, California. I'm going to be out here uh, midweek, this coming week here. Uh, who knows? Hopefully things, well, I mean... It's a chance I take, right? Uh, going down here to Southern California or going out in Texas chasing storms here. It's just a, a chance I have to take when I document uh, my geology studies and weather studies. So, um, oh, but who knows? Hopefully the big one doesn't happen while I'm down there, but uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Right now, pretty quiet in terms of earthquake activity. Only a handful of smaller quakes out there across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, greater Los Angeles area. A couple of smaller quakes here from this morning. I'll be out here around the Rancho Palos Verdes area checking out the landslide features out here that have been occurring for quite a while. And more recently, uh, a fairly devastating landslide back in 2023 uh, where we've seen a number of homes last, uh, lost. Um, they are uh, having to do some construction on the infrastructure below the ground there as far as water piping. Uh, so I'm going to get into some of these residential areas and chat with a few folks and see what we can get there for some content. Also, I'll be up here across the Malibu area uh, looking at the uh, feature across the Santa Monica Mountains here, the southern end where the Malibu Coast Fault is. Um, these two areas are on my priority list right now. I'll be down there live streaming and also documenting, uh, making some other side videos to put together for one full video. But I will be live streaming, so watch for that. Um, this trip. Sa the San Andreas Fault here, I'm going to leave that for the next, uh, maybe next trip down here, but these two areas are of primary interest right now. Nothing showing up yet from the EMS, or the uh, USGS model. EMSC still reporting this as a 5.8. Refresh this real quick. Hard to say though, I mean there's I don't really have any seismograph stations there that uh, could pick up that wave, the seismic wave locally. Distantly, I'm not seeing any type of larger scale activity out there across these seismos, so I don't think it's going to be anything above a 6.0. 
uh, more than likely a 5.8 will stick with that uh, reading there across this, the uh, Peru Chile Trench. Aside from that, deeper earthquake activity here across the Tonga Trench right now and seeing a handful of earthquakes underneath the, uh, well, surface area across the South Island area. 3.7, a couple threes in there in the last uh, few hours. So, but look at that, you know, looking at this globe here, most of the movement uh, has been confined to the South America area, Middle America Trench up towards Southern California, but not quite into the uh, uh, into the fault systems there yet. The Atlantic Ocean awfully quiet. Mediterranean has chilled out a little bit following that earthquake swarm here across the uh, Aegean Sea area. Uh, 5.4 out in the Indian Ocean. Divergent boundary activity uh, right there on the fracture zone on the plate boundary. And uh, just your typical clustering going on here across the Philippines southward into the Indonesia Islands area. I call that the crunch zone because there's not a day that goes by where there's not you know, always earthquake activity. Imagine living out there, uh, always feeling earthquake activity like that. I guess they are used to it. Japan area, fairly quiet. Uh, real quick glance. Looks like they downgraded even a little bit further to a 5.7 right now. Uh, let's see here. Nothing yet from the USGS. They're a little slow. Let me check out the trimmer map here tonight. 181 epicenters here across the central portion, coastal central portion, portion of the Oregon area. Not a big deal, but also a little bit down there across the southern end of the Cascadia um, for a total tally of 181 epicenters. Really no earthquake activity, though, to uh, chat about across this area. Things are awfully quiet, but got to remember, when we get that trimmer activity occurring downstream, down dip here of the subduction zone, into the subduction zone, uh, obviously we got strain building up out here. Rest of the country out there fairly quiet. And uh, let's check out space weather here real quick while we wait for the USGS model. An M-flare, actually a significant M-flare popping up here just a short time ago, long duration M-flare. Uh, looks to be an M 3.7 occurring from our active region here on the southeastern limb of the sun. Now, this is an area, obviously, to watch, and we do have a number of sunspots further out here around the far side of the sun that uh, are large uh, in coverage, and it appears as though they are fairly active. So this is the area that produced the M flare. Definitely watch for that. Um, and on the far side of the sun here, we do have... Uh, the most recent image here looks like the, the face is still there, actually. Look at that. But it's a little bit further to the east. You guys see that? The two eyes, the nose, the mouth. I kind of drew a cat image here on my last thumbnail for the uh, update video. And it was put out a little late, but a little bit better late than never. Uh, but I did draw an image here of some cat feature, and that's still out there. There's two eyes, a nose, a mouth, uh, some ears up here. Goodness. Uh, either way, I'm more interested in this area right here. There's maybe some other features out there as well. I mean, this could be a dragon. It, it could be a tornado. It depends on pers perspective, so to speak. Uh, but very visible in terms of some type of cat image out here. Uh, these sunspots, large in coverage. And uh, again, we're getting a little glimpse of it. There's that M flare from earlier. Beautiful shot of some plasma being blasted off of that sunspot region not earth directed from that m3.7 hopefully that can change here that will change in the uh, coming days maybe the next week or so as we get a number of sunspots coming off the eastern limb here that look to be very active nothing zip zero yet from the usgs model that keeps going down look at that the start off is a 6.2 downgraded to 5.7 now a 5.6 why not make it just a three-pointer, right? There was no earthquake. It was just a little bump in the road. 3.6. <laughs> that's crazy. So that's why, you know, there's... I do have the Earthquake 3D Globe up here showing the USGS and also the combination of the EMSC model. Just specifically for time reference, the e EMSC is very quick uh, to report earthquakes around the globe. USGS, as you can see, it's been probably 10, 15 minutes. Zip zero, not that. And they should report something uh, from this earthquake there, uh, considering for the most part they report 4.0 and above for the international community. Some more deep activity out there across the Fiji area, 363 miles 
into that subduction zone. Real quick glance here at the weather model. Uh, heads up, we got a tropical system here looking more and more likely hitting the Florida Panhandle as a strong Category 3 hurricane. Uh, I don't know if it's going to get any stronger than that, but we definitely want to watch this pretty closely. The models are forecasting a direct impact there across the Florida Panhandle around the Thursday, early Thursday time period, and then, of course, stretching up north in the areas that really don't need any more rain here. But uh, there's a bunch coming. So models have been consistent, uh, and there's definitely some type of uh, major hurricane coming into the region uh, late next week. Got to watch that pretty closely here, folks. Kind of a big deal. Let's see what we got here for the uh, Tropical Tidbits model. Current storms. Um, now, let's see. This is 10, 17. Where is our... Uh, hold on a second here. Stand by. Uh, I need to click on the right one. There we go. How many windows can I open up? <laughs> Probably a lot. <laughs> this is going to be... Um, disturbance one now there there isn't a name on it yet i don't think but obviously there's a 48 hours shows a 50 percent development so this is a got a high probability this may be yeah this is our one right here this is going to be invest 97 l I, I was uncertain on the name of it uh, forecast models here showing a direct impact towards the uh, Florida Panhandle. A little uncertainty, though, so there is a broad area of uh, interest uh, in terms of location. But Category 3 here, look at that. The majority of the model is showing a strong 2 uh, Category 3 hurricane. And, um, you know, depending on how quick it gets pulled from the Gulf of Mexico up upward towards land, we'll decipher on the strength of this hurricane. Either way, Category 2, Category 1, Category 3, heads up. Look at that. Um, be prepared, folks. It's kind of a big deal. Panhandle, Florida has been attract attracting the uh, hurricanes this year. Goodness. So we'll continue to track that as it gets a little bit closer to the time frame. It does look like now uh, the arrival time roughly around uh, Thursday during the day. So heads up. Nothing coming up from the USGS. I may just sleep on this <laughs> because it could be tomorrow by the time they put out uh, a reading. The EMSC reporting a 5.6 here across the Chile area. So we'll see what the USGS comes in at. But uh, for now, have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here for the Monday morning update. Take care and stay safe out there.